Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today, as I've already mentioned, is Pentecost Sunday. 50 years, 50 years, 50 days after Jesus rose from the dead and left his tomb empty, the Holy Spirit arrived for his followers. Just as he said it was going to happen, and well, just as the Old Testament prophecy said it was going to happen as well. Prior to the arrival of the Holy Spirit, though, the, those followers, those disciples were consumed with fear. Prior to Jesus' death, those same followers and disciples were also consumed with fear. And it lasted right up until the day of Pentecost, especially Peter. You know, fear made Peter afraid to talk to a serving girl. There's no way he was going to go out and talk to anybody in, in public about Jesus. It didn't matter what the difference in their languages were. He was not going to do it. Now, let's look at this and realize that the language differences were a real barrier, with or without the Holy Spirit. And getting the message of the Bible across was important. So Jesus sent his, his Spirit to do that. The Spirit changed everything. It's a good reason that when we look at the history of our faith, Pentecost really should be the third most hallowed day in our Christian year. Obviously, Christmas and Easter would, would come first. And you know, it goes without saying, we would not be here today if we're not for a, a baby in a manger in Bethlehem. You know, and the Word became flesh and dwelled among us. And of course, the cross and the empty tomb forever will remain at the center of our faith. But without Easter, we would have no salvation and no hope. But how would we know about the manger? How would we know about the cross and the empty tomb if it not for Pentecost? When the wind of God blew and the church was born, who would have protected the Holy Scriptures with his very life if not for the Holy Spirit arrival? Who would have sent out evangelists and teachers and missionaries to tell the good news of the gospel, if not the church? The church that began with the arrival of the Spirit. Who would have carried out Christ's ministry of healing bodies and minds and souls, if not for the Spirit and his church? And the answer is simple, no one. No one would have done it except the Holy Spirit of God. And the same Holy Spirit still guides and directs the church on earth. I had the honor of baptizing a young fellow named Hudson Kugler yesterday here. And at that baptism, that same Holy Spirit that came to Jesus at his baptism, the same Holy Spirit that arrived for the, the disciples at Pentecost, now resides in that young fellow. Think about the power of that Spirit. And the fact that he has all the attributes of God, he has the power of God, and he has all that because he's God. Holy Spirit is God. We have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. God now lives in each of us who have been baptized through that same Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit arrived for the disciples of Jesus, they were able to communicate with people from all areas of the world, talking all their languages. You know? First of all, we see that the, the Christian faith is a universal faith. This is God's intent. People from differing nations understood the gospel message. Why? Well, because for one thing, the message was meant for all nations and for all people. In the lesson from Acts, it described 15 different nationalities that Jordan already read today. And did a nice job with all those names, too. Nice work. And the disciples were able to communicate with those 15 different groups, and then some. What an amazing event. I've often wondered, was this a miracle of speaking or a miracle of hearing, or both? Those uneducated Galileans speaking all those different languages, or did they speak their own language in those listening by the guidance of the Holy Spirit, simply heard the words in their own language. 
I don't know the answer. Either way, it was a great miracle. Do you remember the scene from the classic Christmas movie, uh, Miracle on 34th Street? A little girl is brought to see Santa Claus at Macy's department store. And the girl's guardian isn't sure whether she should come or not because the little girl can't speak English. She only spoke Dutch. And the, she's, this girl's already had a, a difficult time. You can see her heart's already broken. She's in a place that she's not familiar with. It doesn't really say what happened to her parents, but it's obviously not good. And she doesn't want this kid to be more disappointed by a Santa who could only speak English. But if Santa takes this little girl and puts her on his lap, he looks into her eyes and begins speaking gently in Dutch. And the girl's face just lights up. She can't believe it, that Santa knows her language. Santa speaks her language. The little girl's face lit up like a lamp. It's a wonderful scene in that movie. If you've never seen it, you should. But my friends, it's much more important that God knows our language, that he can communicate with us, that we can understand what he's telling us. And he does that. He does that through his word, all because of his spirit that led those disciples to write down those words, to give us a book we call the Bible. And the Bible is a book of spirit-led information that was written for you and for me. And it's now been translated into everyone's language. And the first verse of the story from Acts says, When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Who were they? There were first about 120 people, all followers of Jesus, both men and women. They were waiting for the baptism of the Holy Spirit because Jesus promised them that, and they believed in his promise. It was the Spirit of God that caused those people to receive that Spirit, and then they became the foundation of the Christian church. It was the Holy Spirit working in each of them, giving them the power, the courage, the knowledge to take the Word of God, the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and share it with the world. The same Holy Spirit that sent the disciples into all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, that's the same spirit that lives in each of us still today. And they did it in everyone's native language. They praised the Lord in all those languages as well. And those disciples knew. They knew that their lives were at risk by telling others about Jesus. They knew it. And all of them, eventually, with the exception of John, would die for their faith. They gave their lives in service to their Lord and their Savior. How appropriate that is today. Not only Pentecost, but Memorial Day weekend. Brave men and women gave their lives for this nation, for us. They served their country. And in addition, they served their Lord. And you and I are, well, we are the recipients. We are the beneficiaries of the freedoms that have been won for us, including the freedom to worship today, including the freedom to want to enter into God's heavenly kingdom. And today we remember the lives that were lost, the lives that were given for you, the lives that were given for me. And you know what? That list is far too long. And that's why I pray today that we never take the sacrifice of our servicemen and women for granted, nor the disciples of Christ who gave their lives for granted either. I pray that we would always remember the messages that Jesus trusted his disciples to teach us. Most of all today, I pray that we would recognize this day of Pentecost as the third most important event in the history of the church of Jesus Christ on earth. Without it, we would know nothing useful. Nothing useful. So God bless all of us today. And God bless us with hearts and minds that care enough to share the gospel message with the world that needs it now more than ever. Amen.